There we go. Good morning. It is still morning here. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at today. Please read along with me word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be looking at today and considering. Please read along with me. Okay, be a Berean. Search these, search these scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? Please, study to shew thyself approved unto God, that ye be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Also, read along with me, because my mouth will go quicker than my brain, and vice versa. Okay? Proverbs 29, verse 11 to start. Just one verse. A fool, fool says in his heart there is no God. Hmm. Or, they are their own God. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Yes. There is a deceiver, an infiltrator, a um, vile, smooth, subtle guy out there. His name is Scott. Okay? His name is Scott. Grafted in the hell ministry, or grafted Calvinist ministry. Okay. It kind of reminds me of that guy from Dudley do right with the mustache and the hat. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's deceiving you people? And oh, he's, oh, he's smooth and subtle, boy. He's, he reminds me of Mr. Fig. He reminds me of Mr. Fig. But I gotta say this. At least Mr. Fig is a little bit more versed in the scriptures than you are. Dolt. But anyway, anyway, today is the 12th. What Proverbs 12? You know, with everything that happened last week, the, 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 the wondrous things that our Lord did, you know, Friday, or Friday, um, we had a relative in our house here. And um, the Lord used that opportunity to, for myself and my wife to witness on to this uh, relative of ours to give him the true gospel. Okay, I, I was there and I, 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 my wife had the scriptures and yes, yes, in a one-on-one -on -one interaction, yes, a sister can witness on to a man. Yes, on a one-on-one -on -one interaction out there, yes, a sister can, as my wife has done, Read scriptures onto men. Yes, but see, one of the things, and this is something that you gotta. This is why you people, you Christians, you King James Bible reading Christians. This is why you gotta pay attention. Okay, this is why you guys need to search the scriptures daily. And when you're watching or listening to someone, you need to be in the scriptures. And sometimes you need to. Slow down, slow down, and be like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Scott over there at Grafted in the Hell Ministry did a very good, very good and subtle video where he basically took the scriptures and said, Yea, hath God said to justify his lovely help me I'm not going to attack another man's wife. Okay? I'm not like that bloke from England. Okay? I'm not going to attack the man's wife. Okay? But this Scott, this Scott from Grafted Into Hell Ministry, um, he did. He had it, and the video was good. His arguments that he brought up were good ones. But see, the thing that he was not intuiting to you people, which is why you need to pay attention. When you're out there, that's a different thing. It really is. But see, the minute you put your lovely face on a public platform such as YouTube, and then you put your wife there also, okay, you can't control who sees or who hears. Hence, when your lovely help meet is preaching and teaching with you sitting there you're contrary to the scriptures because you have put her in a public setting such as this YouTube and you wicked smooth devil boy 
You did that good video. And, and, and see, that was the thing, people. He wasn't intuiting the publicity, the public aspect of being on YouTube. Okay? You violated the scriptures all the while trying to justify violating the scriptures with your yea hath God said, trying to justify your lovely help me preaching and teaching in a public setting such as this. The Lord rebuke you, Scott. The Lord rebuke you, boy. But see, where did he get that from? Where did he get that from that it was okay to have a woman preaching and teaching and that uh, she's not usurping, she's not teaching men? On a public forum, a public setting such as this, where did he get that from? I wonder. I wonder. You guys got to slow down sometimes and really pay attention to what these guys are telling you. Okay? You really got to slow down sometimes. Be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Proverbs 12, verses 5 and verse 8. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood. <laughs> yes. But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not. But the house of the righteous shall stand. Man shall be commended according to his wisdom. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. I wonder what wisdom is in the Mr. Scott over there, uh, grafted uh, Calvinist ministry is. Mm, gee, I wonder. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. See, Scott over there, uh, grafted in the hell ministry, he gives you a gospel without brokenness, without contrition. Like I said, and I watched that video, he twisted the scriptures. He did a yay hat God said right in front of your face to justify his lovely help meet preaching and teaching in a public forum like this. And this is the same man who is teaching you veiled Calvinism. We're going to prove that today. Man's Calvinist, telling you that your faith isn't yours, but it's Jesus' faith, the, the link for that will be in the description box, which set this devil off, okay? <laughs> yeah, because he's a Calvinist. He's Cal oh, I guess you're pretty special, ain't you there, Scott? Huh, boy? Wretched fool! Oh, he doesn't say that there is no God, but the God he serves is, is, is himself! People, you, you gotta watch these guys, okay? You have to watch these guys. It takes time. And sometimes you have to be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, it sounds good. But when you examine what's being said, oh boy. Go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Like I was saying, you know, last week, the Lord opened so many doors and so many things happened. And this week, got to got to do a video like this. But don't worry, we've got plenty of stuff to go through, especially what's coming up on this Wednesday. <laughs> okay, Acts chapter twenty, verses twenty-eight on to verse thirty. Take heed. Therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. You, you don't get to this position because one day you're going you're gonna to decide to emulate someone else and put yourself out there for, to deceive people. Okay? 
Too many people do that. All right? You have free will, but if one is put into a position like this, it is an orchestration of the Lord. All right? Okay. Because you've got to remember, one of the telltale signs, go to Jeremiah chapter 23, Jeremiah chapter 23, one of the telltale signs of a false prophet, one of many, is that it's about them. Grafted branch ministry. Anything, anything ministry. I'm always suspect of that. I'm always suspect. Always suspect of that. Did Paul go around toting uh, the Apostle Paul's ministry? Hmm? Such and such ministries. I, you know, that, that's always been something that is sus to me. It's like, hmm, it's a little self-glorification and pride going on there. Hmm? But anyway, in Jeremiah chapter 23, all right, verses 20 on to verse 22. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed and until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days he shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets. Yet they ran, grafted in the hell ministry. And he's growing too. Why? Because he's so smooth and subtle. And by his countenance, by his mannerisms, by his um, surroundings, is trying to ingratiate himself onto those of you who follow the man from Maine. Now, I don't really care for the man from Maine at all, and I'm not going to, whatever, okay? And there are those of you out there who follow the man from Maine. There's another thing entirely when one tries to emulate that man and take upon themselves the mannerisms, the looks, the similarities in order to deceive and give off this um, facade that, hey, see, I'm one of you. Meaning, it's not his own self. Okay? And, you know, as I have been informed, this devil, Scott, um, in a one of guys from Maine's video uh, was even preaching in the comment section. I was informed of this because uh, I, I don't watch these things. I don't watch I, I don't, I, I don't want to watch him. I don't want to hear his voice. Okay, I don't want, I didn't watch the video done by this uh, gra uh, grafted in the hell idiot. I didn't watch it. Okay, I got better things to do with my time. Okay, but apparently this guy was preaching this veiled Calvinism in the comment section of the guy from Maine's videos. And I, and I asked the brother, it's like, well, why didn't he jump on that? Hey, hey remember to buy his T-shirt! Never mind. Never mind. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. Run. They want to be in the front. They want, they want to take their, your eyes away from the truth and have it fixated on them. It's all about them. It's all about them. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. But yet this guy, he's preaching to you veiled Calvinism. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Back to Acts chapter 20, verse 28 again. Uh, 28 on to verse 30. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the Christians. Church of God. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, that you're a robot, that the faith that you have isn't your faith, but it's actually Jesus Christ's faith. Again, if that were the case, 
why are you still sinning? Huh? You vile, smooth devil, Scott. The Lord rebuke you, son. I have brother, brethren praying for me that the uh, mean breath doesn't come out. This is why you, I, I read to you Proverbs 29, 11. Okay, keep it in afterwards because, you know, you smack me, uh, I tend to want to smack you back. But the Lord's like, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Wait. Okay. And also of your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after. And I know the, the man from Maine is very busy, but one of you who may see this, please inform him of the heresy, the veiled Calvinism that this guy is teaching. Okay, please. <laughs> All right. At 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, you know, I have seen over the years, these guys come and go who try to warm, uh, ingratiate themselves within a body of people. Um, Denlinger writes. Denlinger writes. Now, um, dear Frankie boy, he, he calls me a Denlinger right. Not because, hey, come on, come on, man. Do I, do I look? Come on, don't, don't give me a break. No. But uh, because he, the man from Maine and I, we do hold quite a few of the same views. <laughs> Not all. But um, this thing of being an actual Den Denlinger Denlingerite or a Ruckmanite, okay? Guys like Scott, there have been others who emulate even to the wearing of the clothing, okay? The, trying to get the, the look as well. That's disturbing. And when our enemies even point that out, they're right to do so. And to the man from Maine's credit, I know I said his last name, I, I, I don't want to attack him because I, I truly believe he, he's clueless of this guy. And if he isn't, then why is he allowing it? Anyway, but I, I don't want it, nothing against him on this video, but, um, you know, even he has publicly, it's like, don't, don't take my look upon you. Don't, you know, Go as the Lord would have you. Okay? But see, the problem is, Ruckman, Ruckman, towards the latter end of his life, he was, get, he was enjoying the fact that he was being emulated. You can't prove to me otherwise. Okay? I'm not saying the man from Maine is like that, but uh, what I'm telling you is, even he would be like, uh, dude, don't, don't do that. I don't like that guy. And here I am, kind of sticking Anyway, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 under verse 7, As I besought thee to abide at, still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Hey, Scott, where is brokenness? Where is contrition in the gospel that you present? See, a Calvinist who believes they are elect, who, who is teaching and preaching that the faith you have isn't even your own, so what do you got to worry about, right? 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 Other doctrine. Other doctrine. Scott's giving you another Jesus, and he's giving you another gospel. But see, but see, here's the thing. He's got the look similar to the man from Maine. He's ingratiated himself amongst the people who, who uh, follow him. He's, he's infiltrated. He's infiltrated. People, you've got to pay attention to these things. You've got to examine these things. Okay? Yes, it would be great. You know, but like, it's, you know, like the scripture says, some men's sins are open beforehand. Other times you've got to wait and take a step back and look. Okay? This guy's a devil. He's a Calvinist. He believes he's elect. Okay? He's teaching you that your faith isn't your faith, but the faith of Jesus. So the faith that is of Jesus himself, actually Jesus' faith, 
that is in you, and yet you're still sinning? That they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity, which is self-sacrifice, out of a pure heart and a good conscience and a faith unfeigned, from which some have swerved, from which some having swerved, have turned aside onto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Scott. You know, I offered to talk to him. He didn't receive that well. And rightfully so, not, not rightfully so, excuse me, and I kind of didn't receive his response well either. Okay, But I did. It's like, hey, I, I would have had email correspondence with him, but he didn't want it. That's fine. That's fine. I got better things to do. But 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 4 and verse 5. Got to remember this about the... Uh, Mr. Grafted in the Hell Ministry. It's all about him. It's all about him. Because he teaches you veiled Calvinism. And Calvinism, it's all about elect and non-elect. you got to remember, people, you got to pay attention and you have to examine sometimes with a fine-tooth comb what these guys are saying. And see, a lot of you who watch these or listen to these videos how many of you, how many of you actually have the scriptures in front of you? How many of you, when you hear something, you pause the video, it's like, and then you search the context? How many of you do that? Devils, infiltrators, bank on the fact that most of you don't. Again, how is someone able to get away with such devilment, such smooth? subtle things such as what Mr. Scott thinks he is. And he is. He is smooth or oh, he's subtle. And at first glance, a King James Bible believing Christian isn't going to catch it. Because why? He's one of you. He's a King James Bible believing Christian. And he looks the part from what many of you are being taught to accept as a visual stimuli of what a King James Bible boy in Christian is. Think about that statement I just said. Pause and think about what I just said. Are you a robot? Do you, did not the Lord give you a mind so you yourself could search the scriptures that he could lead you and guide you? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Gain is godliness. Oh, this this uh, grafted in hell is gaining the people, the, I don't know if he's gaining donations, but he's gaining. He's gaining popularity. He's smooth. He's subtle. He's, he's one of you, remember. He is a demonorite. And to the credit of the man from Maine, at least on camera, he'd be like, dude, what are you doing? At least he ought to. And if he doesn't, then, that, then I'll tell you something. But at least he would be like, uh, guys, guys, I, I'm not for this. I'm not for this. Okay. All right. 
I've seen over the years these guys who emulate, like I said, the man from Maine, and try to ingratiate themselves into your little thing there, and they get by because why? They have the visual stimuli. They sound right. Hey, they, they read from the King James Bible, right? But when you examine what they're saying, how many of you are doing that? How many of you are doing that? And of course, the visual stimuli is one of the main things that this devil attacked me on. Because of this. I was told about some of the comments about, uh, you know, what kind of a guy puts a lot, and yes, it's loaded. Uh, uh, gun without bullets is a hammer, okay? Uh, people were like, how could he do that? Um, you know, sometimes when you're witnessing, you have to hit people hard to get their attention. And when I have done that, it was always in the context to show people, hey, God isn't forcing you to make the right decisions. God is not for God does not force salvation on anyone. Anyone. Unless you're a Calvinist. <laughs> Unless you're a Calvinist. And see, this guy is, and see, this is a tactic of emulation. Now, emulation, uh, variations of it appear twice in Scripture. Go to Romans chapter 11, okay? Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, we want verses 13 on to verse 15, okay? Like I've said, I've seen this with several people who follow the man from Maine, okay? And like I said, I do not fault him for some people out there who will want to take on the plaid. There's a, hey, a man spoke, you know, man grow beard, fine. But emulating him. You gotta watch out for that, people. You gotta watch out for that. See, it shows to you the visual stimuli. It's a thing of the eyes. It's the thing of the eyes. You watch that guy. He has the look, doesn't he? Doesn't he? You do. Yeah, you're very subtle, man. You're very subtle. But uh, you're a devil, and you're deceiving people. People need to stay away from this guy. And if the guy from Maine had half a sense of a brain, which he does, I just don't think he's aware of you. And I hope someone makes him aware of your Calvinistic heresy. But anyway, Romans chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation, one of two, them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For, the, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them be but life from the dead? And also in the Pauline epistles, we see Paul make the comments like, be followers of me. Okay? What is Paul talking about? Well, go to Acts chapter 23. Go to Acts chapter 23. Just one verse. Acts chapter 23 to start. One verse. Acts chapter 23, verse 6. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope of the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And in Acts chapter 24, verses 17, on to verse 21, Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Whereupon certain Jews found from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with Tolman, who ought to have been here before thee, and object if they had aught against me. Or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me, while well, I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this 
day. Hmm. Provoked to emulation. What did Paul mean when he said that? What did Paul mean when he said that? Paul was preaching the true Jesus Christ. Paul did not want people and was not preaching people to look like him, take on his mannerisms, and even try to get the same visage and countenance as Paul. No. But to follow the example of his faith. Okay? That's what he meant in Romans chapter 11. Because you never know. A guy like Scott, he tried to justify uh, trying to look like the guy. Probably would. So petty and vain that he is. And a novice. Novice. Okay? Now also go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Verses 12 on to verse 13. Galatians chapter 4. Verses 12 on to verse 13. Brethren. I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. <laughs> ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first, and my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as the angel of God, even as Jesus Christ. Paul's example of the faith once delivered unto the saints is what Paul meant when, uh, when he talked about emulation in Romans chapter 11. That they would emulate that faith, not Paul and his speaking, his mannerisms, even how he puts together something he wishes to speak. No, 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 no. The emulation of his faith which this devil tells you isn't even yours. Think about that. If, if it's not your faith, which we already discussed last week, um, why are you still sinning? And in Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 on to verse 21, verses 16 on to verse 21, this I say then, walk in the capital S spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the lust, for the flesh lusteth against the capital S spirit, and the capital S spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the capital S spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, of the flesh, are manifest. Stop. Stop. Remember Matthew chapter 23, verse 16? Hold your place. Matthew chapter 23, verse 16. Okay? Matthew 23, verse 16. Or, excuse me, excuse me. No, it's not Matthew 23. Um... <laughs> Where was it? Uh, oh, six, Matthew 16. I got mixed up. Sorry about that. <laughs> Matthew 16. <laughs> Matthew 16, verse 23. See? See, this is what I'm talking about. Do you got the scriptures in front of you? Are you reading along with me? When I just did that, were you like, oh, Brad, what are you talking about? Were you reading along with me? Hmm? Or are you sitting there passively? Seeking to be entertained, huh? And maybe get a little feel good out of it. How many of you are actually searching the scriptures? How many of you are? I wonder. <clears throat> Matthew 16, verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when you go to the beloved, 1 John chapter 2. <laughs> 1 John chapter 2. Okay, Is this dude, is he a Jesuit? I, I have no idea. I have, I have not given, given this imbecile that much of my time, even though I have given him my time. Okay, uh, I don't know. 
I know that he's teaching you contrary to the scripture. That's all that's all I need to know. But in first John chapter two, okay, verses fifteen on to verse seventeen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Eye candy, boy. Nothing but eye candy, Scott. And you've ingratiated yourself. You've wormed yourself in. You've infiltrated yourself among those people who follow that man. And you play the part well. You're a good actor. And people got to actually pay attention to catch it. And see, you're banking on people not. Because you look the part. Okay? You look the part. And I'll be honest with y'all. One of the reasons, one of the reasons why I um, got rid of the beard uh, was because I don't want to have any association with certain people like that. But anyway, verse 17 in Galatians 5, again, let's continue to verse 21. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, emulations. They look the part. They sound the part. What they say to you sounds even good. But what do you take the time? Be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sounds almost too good to be true. How would you know unless you're searching the scriptures, buddy? Hmm. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife. Seditions, heresies, like Calvinism. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, reference unto the spiritual. Okay? Alright. Hmm. Now Bear with me here. I am on OBS. I got this queued up. Okay, I'm gonna do the window here. Now we're not we're not gonna be listening or anything to this this devil. But um, let's see. Yeah, here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Yeah, yeah. Here he is. Scott. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be be quiet. Shut up. Okay. Grafted. And there he is with my the video, which has got 474 views, huh? huh. Want to get a little publicity? Wow, huh? Wow, dude. But yes, grafted into hell ministry. Here he is. And and, and look and look and see, see now. I'm not going to attack another man's wife. I'm not going to attack another man's wife. Um, people, people, what do you see when you look at these? What do you see? And like I said, this man did a video where he said, basic, where he basically did a yeah, hath God said to justify his lovely help meet to preach and teach and to usurp authority over a man. And where did he get that from? Okay, where did he get that from? This is a public setting. This is, you know, YouTube. Hmm? What do you guys see when you look, when you see this? What do you see? Hmm? What do you see? Do you see this? 
Look at that. What does that resemble? Hmm? A anyway, anyway, we're not going to listen to... You, you, you just shut up. Shut look at that! Does it, doesn't that look familiar, people? Hmm? Look at that video. Huh. Emulations, anybody? This guy's a deceiver, people. Watch out for him. But, okay, now put that aside. Scott there is teaching veiled Calvinism. Now, the link for this will be in the description box for you. Now, redeeming God, what? Okay. <laughs> This is what Scott is preaching and teaching when it comes to the faith of Jesus. He's a Calvinist. Okay? I mean, let, let's, let, let's look at this. Okay? We're not going to go through this whole thing. Okay? Calvinists believe faith is a gift from God. And even the man from Maine, taught, apparently as I am informed, because I don't watch the guy, even the guy from Maine has taught contrary to this heresy. Okay? Anyway, Calvinists believe faith is a gift from God. And any of you who support uh, Mr. Scott and have fallen for his uh, heretical thing about the faith of Jesus, does this sound familiar? Yesterday we learned about the Calvinistic idea that faith is a work. I briefly mentioned that as a result of this idea, Calvinists believe that people cannot on their own Place faith in Jesus Christ for eternal life. Yet, if faith is something good that we do, if faith is a work, why does God call people to place faith in Jesus for eternal life? And this guy, of course, John 3, 16, uh, 5, 24, and 6, 47, then go to the Pauline epistles, I wonder. But why does God seem to hold people responsible for something which they are not able to do? The Calvinistic answer to this is, is that faith itself is a gift from God. Wow! Uh-oh, Scott! Uh-oh! Huh? Since God requires faith in Jesus, and since God knows that it's impossible for the unregenerate person to place faith in Jesus, the Calvinist argues that God himself gives faith to the person so that they can, so that they can then believe. So then, Faith becomes a gift from God, which is exactly what Mr. Scott that grafted into hell, grafted Calvinist ministry teaches. You're a wicked devil, Scott. Your channel, dude. You're emulating the guy from Maine. You're even, you're even giving the same theatrics as he does. People, wake up. Wake up, okay? Again, let me allow Calvinists to explain this idea. Pay attention! Again, let me allow Calvinists to explain this idea that faith is a gift in their own words. Genuine faith is granted by God. Faith is a supernatural gift of God. Faith is not something that is, is conjured up by the human will, but is a sovereignly granted gift. MacArthur, the gospel, oh boy, elect and not elect, huh, Scott? Faith is God's gift. <laughs> In no degree could a natural man produce faith. It is utterly beyond him. Let us adore the God who gives it. Wells, whoever that is. Faith and repentance are divine gifts and are wrought in the soul through the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. Steal. The five points of Calvinism. Now, that sounds good, doesn't it? But as is demonstrated in the video that was done last week on this very topic, then you're a machine. God forces it upon you. And again, Scott and all you guys who are duped by him, that means that God is holding a gun to your head 
and forcing it upon you. That's coercion. And God does not force salvation onto anyone. You wicked devil! The Lord rebuke you, boy! Faith is a gift from God. It is permanent. The faith that God gives begets obedience. God gave it to you and he sustains it. May God grant you a true saving faith, a permanent gift that begins in humility and brokenness, uh, brokenness and contrition, which are nowhere in Scott's preaching and teaching. At least not that I, and then again, I have not watched all of his stuff and I won't. Okay? May God grant you a true saving faith, a permanent gift that begins in humility and brokenness over sin and ends up in the obedience, in obedience unto righteousness. That's true faith and it's a gift that only God can give. And if you desire it, pray and ask that he would grant it to you. MacArthur! Sounds good, doesn't it? But, like I said, if that's the truth, then God is coercive, forcing it onto you. And that, as has been proven, not by me only, but has been proven, is contrary to Scripture. Have you encountered the, uh, this idea in any of the writings? If so, where? What are your thoughts on this idea? And is that it? Yes, that is it. Okay, yeah, but that, that's it. See, Scott is teaching you veiled Calvinism, dear friend. He's Calvinist. He's an infiltrator. He's an emulator, okay? We, we looked at his channel briefly, okay? Um, who did he look like? Okay, who did he look like? All right. He was emulating the man from Maine. Even in his appearance, in his presentation, even in his mannerisms. That's what infiltrators do. Why? Why? To warm themselves in. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. Verses 13 on to 21. I think this is very appropriate when it talk, when, in discussing people like this devil Scott at uh, Grafted Calvinist Ministry. Grafted into hell. I don't know what I'm going to call this channel yet, this, this uh, video yet, but it's going to be grafted into something. And I'm also going to link his channel. And also to... Anyway. Proverbs 7. 13 on to verse 21. So she... Mystery Babylon. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. I'm one of you. Look, I, my fruits are good. They're good because I'm basing them on a facade that comes from someone else. See, I looked apart. Look, I'm doing the, the rustic look and I've, I've twisted the scriptures to justify my lovely help me to teach you and uh, usurp authority over a man. Yeah, yeah. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Yes. He looks the part. He sounds the part. His teachings are so smooth and subtle. They sound good. But see, when you actually examine them yourself, the Lord leading and guiding you. Again, how many of you are actually searching the scriptures daily with this guy? Huh? How many? How many? I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. See, doesn't it, doesn't it look the part doesn't it look familiar to those who follow a certain man from Maine? Hey, look at you see him? Look at me. I look just like him. Filthy dog, you. You're a filthy, wretched, rotten dog, Scott. mind meeting you face to face one day, huh? <laughs> Not for what you think or what you guys might go off in that direction, because um, I offered you, Scott, 
I offered to talk with you. You didn't want it. Okay, boy. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. And cinnamon. Look at verses 16 and 17. They're all visual. They're all sensory um, based. Earthly, sensual, devilish. Come! Let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. <laughs> Where are we reading to? Verse 21. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Verse 21 specifically. With her much fair speech she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips she forced him. Smooth things. Look. Out there, personal, one-on-one, -on -one, yes, a woman witness onto a man. Yes, a woman could use scriptures with my wife has done it. Okay? Yes. But see, the minute you are in a public forum such as YouTube and you twist scripture to justify your lovely help me being up there, you're in con you're contrary to scripture, Scott. And I would have talked to you cordially about that. But you are your own God and you have uh you have um you have an agenda. Like I said, I hope that someone will at least warn the guy from Maine about this. Okay? Anyway, let's read that again. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With his smooth, subtle deceptions. Yeah, I, I fly off the handle sometimes. I do things, how you say, unconventionally. Hmm? Yeah. See, the guy you are looking at is the guy you're going to meet out there. wonder what kind of guy you would meet if uh, we were to meet personally, Scott. Hmm? I wonder what kind of individual you would get if you met the guy from Maine personally. I wonder. I wonder. With the flattering of her lips, she caused him to yield. Oh, excuse me. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Excuse me. Excuse me. And also, go to Psalm or Proverbs 5 now. Proverbs 5, verses 3 on verse 13. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. And her mouth smooth. Oh, yeah. See, uh, Scott there gives you a gospel without brokenness and contrition. He's telling you that the faith you have isn't your own, but that it's Jesus' actual faith. That's Calvinistic doctrine. The guy's a Calvinist. Elect and non-elect. The guy's a heretic. The guy's a devil. Okay? The guy's a devil. All right? And his words are smooth. He has the same mannerisms of the guy from Maine. Anyway. But. And see. <laughs> if it's not your faith. The answer to God's grace. Even, even, even. Fake gracers can get this one right. Then, again, what do you do with the issue of sin? I'm sure Scott would give a very good Calvinistic answer to that. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. See, and, and dear Mr. Fig over there, you know, one of his arguments, well, it doesn't take that much time to discern whether or not someone's a saint. It's like, sometimes you're right. But more, especially nowadays, with the ignorance that is in Christians, okay, um, 
so it takes time. You need to examine what these people are saying. We make mistakes. We, we blurt things out. Yes, we do. We make mistakes. But when you actually examine some of the things that these people are saying, do. Again, I question whether or not those of you who are being deceived by this devil, I question whether or not any of you are actually searching the scriptures daily. Huh? You know, at the beginning of this video, I told you to search the scriptures along with me. Okay? I expect you to do so. And you know what? There are brethren out there who do. And guess what? When I mess up, I get emails. Uh, my brethren, uh, Brad, you said this. Brad, you said that. Oh, boy. Okay? Why aren't the majority of you King James Bible believing Christians doing that? Why? Why are you falling for something that, like this? Granted, granted, granted. <laughs> His words, like a honeycomb, his mouth is smoother than oil. I'll, I'll give you that. But if you were in the scriptures yourself, anyway, lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Part not from the words of my mouth. The scriptures. Remove thy way far from her. And come that nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others. And thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers. Be filled with thy wealth. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me? Second Peter chapter 2. Like I said, I, this is not the video I wanted to do. But like I said to a dear brother, it's like, I have to. I don't have to. Because remember, the Lord didn't point a gun at my head. But um, the this veiled Calvinistic teaching is very dangerous. And when you are going forward believing that it's not your faith at all, then that could give rise for you to justify you doing just about anything. At least the fake gracer is up front about it. And I hate saying that. I hate saying that. Okay. Second Peter, second Peter, excuse me, second Peter chapter two, verses seventeen on to verse nineteen. Scott, these are wells without water. The water of life that come issues out of the belly. It's not there. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, that it's not your faith. Our faith is the answer to God's grace. And if it's contrary to that, then it's coercion. You wicked devil. Okay? You wicked devil. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried away with the, and carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure, there it is, through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. There's the thing about the flesh, the visual stimuli, like we saw on his channel. You know? And, you know, when I had the beard, and, you know, like guys was like calling me a den on the right, they called me that because, you know, of the, the you know, he and I do share a lot of the same similar views. We do. Okay? We do. Whether he likes to, whether I like to acknowledge that or not. Okay? But, um, 
you know, the, you know, with the thing with the beard again. Man, go ahead and grow, grow your beard, but you know, um, <laughs> I'm prettier than this man. <laughs> you know, I want nothing to do with that. Okay. I want nothing to do with that. This is the way the Lord will have me to do this. The person that you are seeing right now is the person you're going to meet out there. Okay? I wonder if it's the case with some of these King James Bible believing Christians. Okay? But that thing about the, the flesh, that uh, eye candy, that visual stimuli, it looks good. It even sounds good. But when you actually examine it, while they promise them liberty, Hey, don't worry. It's not even your faith. That's Calvinist. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. And reference chapter uh, Romans chapter six, verse fifteen and sixteen. On that. Okay. And finally, let's go to Psalm fifty-five. Psalm. 55, one verse, Psalm 55, just one verse, verse 21, Psalm 55, verse 21, hmm. actually, let's read verses 20 and 21, he hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him, he hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Scott. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. There will be several videos in the description box for you to consider. Don't need to get off on a big long tangent about uh, the stuff that uh, Mr. Scott is deceiving you people with because it's already been done. Okay? All right? And, you know, the methods I employ are a little crude. Yes, are unconventional. Okay? Yeah, yeah. But see, this is the way the Lord will have me to do. The faith is what of Paul, his practice of that faith, is what we are to follow. But to be an emulator of him, himself, and his person, such as Mr. Scott is of the man from me. Brethren, watch out for this type of deception and these types of deceivers. Sounds good. Even looks the part, but when you examine what he's teaching, it's heresy. He did, yea, hath God said to justify his lovely help me teaching and preaching on a public forum such as YouTube, contrary to scripture. And he says the faith that you have isn't even yours. Okay, and even the guy who he's emulating uh, teaches rightly according to scripture. Got it? Hey, he does. Uh, teaches rightly against uh, against what even Scott himself teaches. And what Scott teaches is Calvinism. Lord rebuke you, Scott, boy! And I hope you get yourself right. I do. I do. I, I hope you get your head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. Hmm? I really do. I really do. And Scott... You'll see this. The offer's open still. You wanna, you wanna talk? You wanna be a man, huh, Mr. Big Shot? Come on, I'll, I'll converse with you. I'll converse with you. Still open. But you, you go along, and run off some. Anyway, that is going to be it for this little video. Dear brethren, I apologize, but this kind of needed to be addressed. So, thank you so much for watching. If you do, thank you to those of you who have prayed for us, 
for what we have gone through and going through. Please pray for one another and the brethren. A lot of brethren are going through a lot of stuff. There is stuff out there that I have not been given permission to speak of publicly, uh, especially about a dear brother from uh, New Jersey, um, who um, the Lord was very merciful, praise the Lord, um, onto him, and also our brother from North Dakota, uh, Brother Jeff, who has long given me permission to speak about the things concerning him. But there are a lot of brethren out there who need your prayers and need need comfort. And last I checked, Lord Jesus Christ is God of all comfort. Oh, and uh, dear dear brother, um, I got. I got your new number. I'll get a hold of you uh, as soon as I can, okay? So, anyway, that's going to be it for this little video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.